Hey, good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and you're welcome to our conversation today, the Racism Talk. It is a platform, a space to create awareness on the problematic of racism and discrimination, of course, and the effect of racism on the uh, victims and of why we are having this conversation. We want to exchange. We want to also heal ourselves. Remember that racism causes trauma and also pain um for the victims and we want to take action so at the end of our conversation we hope intend of course to take action and positive actions for change and so welcome with me today a very very crucial important very nice conversation we are talking not just a racism talk but we are talking today in honor of the late i must precise a cameroonian german Theodore Wanda Michael, who was a prisoner in the time of Nazi. And we have an amazing group of people in Cologne. I don't know what Cologne does with me, but somehow they have a way to get me into their system. And of course, this amazing group of people decided to dedicate um, a library on behalf or in honor to, of uh, Theodore Wonja Mishael. And so today we are not only going to be having the conversation about this library, we're going to be seeing how instrumental a library can be, could be to overcome the trauma of racism, the difficulties, or again, be a safe space for victims so that they can always run by it could also be a space for learning whereby we can meet again and our guest today is no other person i'm beginning with a gentleman lamin kakbo who is an author and he will be telling us a little more too about his book and his relationship with of course the library and then we have dr Agnes Barrio, I hope I pronounced your name correctly. Dr. Agnes, I am informed that she also is the initiative. She started the idea or brought up the idea and was particularly keen to have people who start up things. And of course, we have another person as one Wambi Rose who is always telling us about re-education. I'm fascinated about this trio, these three people doing amazing things in the community. And that will be our conversation today. I am welcoming you all who is watching us from wherever, from the YouTube, as well as from the Facebook page. Do us the favor to share the link, invite your friend. Remember the concept of the Ubuntu. We are because you are. So you're welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for being our guest this evening. And thank you to Lamin. Thank you, Dr. Adnes. And thank you, Wambi Rose, for being my guest this evening. My name is Vera Sampo, and I'm your host. I'm going to start with you. Lamin, how are you? Tell us a little bit more about yourself, who you are, what is the connection between you, Monja, and the library? Well, first of all, I'm very fine. Um, I hope you're doing fine as well. Vera, thank you for inviting us to the show. And um, as you said, my name is Lamin, Lamin Cabo. Um, I live in Cologne and um, I'm a writer. And um, one of the members of the um, task force for organizing and uh, building the Theodore Vonya uh, Michel Library in Cologne. And um, we started this project about half a year ago and um, we came together, different minds came together and um, we asked ourselves what was the, um, what is the best or what we feel is the best uh, thing we can do for the community as uh, for the community in Cologne as far as uh, education goes. So we decided to um, build a library. And as we um, were looking for a name, we the um, the first name that came up was uh, Theodore Theodore Vonya Michael, and um, all of us agreed on it. And for me. 
Um, I read his book before. I, I, I knew about his story. And when I heard, okay, um, he, we, we should um, name the library after him, I said, okay, that's the perfect match. Um, being what he stands for, um, the hardship he had to go through and still coming out um, with a positive mindset and also being a very scholarly pers person, ve very well-read person. And um, yeah, just what he stands for in the um, black community in Germany. And um, also being a native of Cologne or living in Cologne for a long time. So that was the perfect match for us. And I said, okay. Mm. let's go with okay. this mm. thank you very much we're going to get into the conversation proper so just that we know the people know we're going to get into the conversation proper to know a little more about one year Michael and to know the kind of books he wrote and why you're fascinated about his name being on your library ma'am Dr. Agnes tell us more a little about who you are and how did you come about this idea especially with the library. First of all, Vera, thank you very much for your invitation. Um, it's a delight to be here and to join you guys. Um, yes, my name is Dr. Jula Barrio and um, I'm a medical doctor. I also am located in Cologne. And um, after the George Floyd demos, there were a group of people who decided to use that energy that was set free after those events and um, built up something, something sustainable actually, and not to let it pass because this was not the first mur murder, it's not gonna be the last, but something definitely changed and was this energy was felt. And so I was lucky to be amongst those people that was contacted. Um, and so we met, that time meeting was still okay. And um, we met and um, we formed different groups that had different goals in mind, what we could do in our com community, what we could do to, you know, um, built up something sustainable, as I said. And one of the ideas was definitely like education. Um, um, so we came up with different ideas, but it was quite clear, quite fast that we wanted a library and not just a library, but a space, a safe space and a space where we have our um, books, like books of, uh, people of African descent, um, black descent, and where not only books, but maybe in future art, music, everything that builds our uh, builds up our narrative or, or speaks out our narrative and is is also a bonus for our culture, um, a bonus for our community, and that is able to educate us and that we have a space where we decide which books are shown and then everyone who's interested actually has access but what is important is that we can choose um what um is important actually and what we want to see in there mm -hmm. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Agnes. Thank you for this uh, elaboration. Uh, we appreciate and thank you for making us again understand we're going to come to this uh, conversation proper. But thank you already for making us understand that this idea was to create a safe space for the people with African descent of, or of African descent where we can have our books, music, art, that speaks of our narrative. And of course, who can come in now? Wombi Rose, I love to be with you. Love your presence and love your spirit of re-education. So tell us more again about you, Wombi Rose. And of course, what's the connection between you and the library? And of course, the man, the name you dedicated to. Thank you very much, uh, Vera. I also love... Um, having conversations with you. Um, my name is Rose Wambui and um, those who know me know I love education very much um, and um, especially the re-education part of it because uh, it's with education that we can change 
uh, we can change the, the the brains of especially of our kids um, I'm generally more into the children and young uh, young adults um, but books can obviously also be used for grown-ups to re-educate grown-ups too and I um, joined the education task force um, right at the beginning um, as uh, as it has been said before um, we kind of wanted to use this energy it came about with the Pedro Vaviadi and also different associations which were there many people just came together and it's like we were all tired and we all wanted to do something and then there was this idea of creating task forces right so there was the education there was empowerment there was the demonstration task forces and so we got into the education task force uh, we are more of us uh, not just the three of us there's also people like uh, dr keith hamaimbo is in this task force uh, people like glenda obamula is this in, in this task force and many other people we are like around 11 people and um yeah and we thought for re-education what we need obviously is books because uh books are um nachhaltig i sometimes i forget the english word for nachhaltig kind um books stay right so uh, we need books um and this is what we are missing um and if we look at our own uh black history that is what we always miss that we don't really know what happened sometimes we reduce our history to slavery and colonialism because we just don't know what happened before that uh, sustainability thank you very much for that so books are sustainable and so we thought why not create a library um, and as njula was saying a library which will create a space where we can meet where we can have conversations but where we can also have books where young adults and children can just come borrow the books read there sometimes even others can come and read their own books uh, so we just really wanted to have this idea happening and of course it wouldn't have happened if all of you guys uh, on social media did not come up and send books <clears throat> send books um to us and i mean even the money we got from you we got around five thousand euros from you guys so it was an idea and obviously we know ideas that cannot be done or put into action are useless so we are very grateful that you came in to support this idea that we had and right now it looks like it's it's actually happening and i'm really really happy about this thank you of course the other one yeah i forgot to answer that question the other one amisha he is a walking library you know i remember us having this conversation and we were like he is a walking library i mean who else can we uh, name apart from him so thank you very much yeah I like this. He is a walking library. I had a conversation with a friend who told me, Vera, I have the impression that you're a walking library. And I'm happy when we have people who are walking library that you just have a lot of stuff in your mind because you have gone through a lot of experiences and then you just can share with people. I'm very happy to have you all on the platform and we want to welcome and recognize the presence of those that are here. Thank you so very much for always being supportive to the work we are because because you are, who else should do this work if not us? So I want to recognize the presence of, um, of course, uh, Batemona Abeke. Thank you for always being there to support the community. Thank you very much, uh, Miri, Mari. I promise you, Miri, Mari, that we're going to have a conversation. And of course, I'm putting you already, I'm planning you already in my conversation for next week. So I hope that uh, you're going to be prepared for this, Mary. And uh, now I've openly said it. So you just got to prepare yourself. Thank you for always being here, Mary. I want to also recognize the presence of Glenda over over Muller. I think that she is also one of you. And so that's um, a good thing to have you all supporting one another. I recognize the presence of Alphonsine, uh, who says, tall job, a good work you people are doing. This goes back to you. I recognize the presence of uh, Maggie Eckhoff, who is saying, nice topic. Uh, thanks, Vera, for bringing this. Who else should bring this if not us? We are supposed to bring this. And of course, I recognize the presence of Ida, um, Ida Nisi, Daniel. I love this topic. Thank you for being here. And um, Maggie is watching and she says, I am watching. Thank you very much. Hey, I want to start my question with you, ma'am. Uh, Dr. Agnes, we, you said that um, 
the, it was the death of George Floyd, I mean, that provoked when all these things came up. And you also mentioned the fact that it wasn't the first death and it will not definitely be the, the last one that happened. Um, and so that's why you, we wanted you people in your work task, wanted to create a safe space for the African people in Cologne, in Germany, by providing literature, books, and then you're hoping that it becomes a space whereby it will be a space for art, a space for music, a space where you can be able to bring out your own narratives. Now, my question is this, ma'am, how distorted is our narratives up to now? so that the library that you're bringing can really help to rebuild our narratives. Could you please um, repeat the first part of the question? I'm sorry, I didn't get it. Now the question, I, I, I paraphrase what you said. You said that the library, the intention was to have a safe space for the people of African descent, where we can have books and all of that. So my question is this, uh, we have always had a uh, distorted narrative, untrue narratives that are not complete and are not really true. Um, now, how does this library help in the propagation of a true narrative of the African people? Thank you very much for repeating it. Um, first of all, I would say it's it's quite simple because when you grow up in a in a school system, for instance, that is not really showing um, the great artists or the great authors of our um, motherland or of Africa or of maybe other places. I'm not just talking about ours, but now we're here to talk about ours. Um, you don't find yourself represented and you always there's always a picture being portrayed that there's nothing else in black history than slavery so you're always finding yourself or your idols as yeah uh, victims all right so you also get the idea that you're victimized or you're, you're a victim and then also when you um undergo um the racism or you 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 um feel racism and racism uh, racist effects in your everyday life um you also feel like a victim so it's always the same thing you will experience again and again and again and so when you're able to choose um books of powerful writers, male and female, um, and you start that with kids especially, and they grow up knowing we have a rich culture, words, you know, when you have racist experience, then also reading can also help you to escape that, even though it's not going to change what you go through every day, but you have another world also that is opened up to you, and reading gives you words that you don't only dream of at night, but that you can also use in conversations when you talk with people. And when you're allowed to have this freedom and this vision that is a different one that people put into your brain, um, then you can build your own essence. And you know, when you build your own inside, then it's not, it's less effective maybe what the outside does to you. So it's just um, a big um, empowerment, I believe, that this uh, library uh, can do for us. And if we start that, especially with the young generation, I truly believe that we're able to, you know, build them up and strengthen them for what they might face in future. And even us, even those who have been experiencing certain things um, for years, for decades, it's a healing process that this library is able to do because we can choose um, what 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 we what we put inside, what we what we want to hear, what we want to read, and um, as I said, not only slavery, not only one month in a whole year, yeah, not only Black History Month, but twelfth month a year, you know. So that's just Thank celebrating. You, and to me, I, I celebrate that. Thank you. I'm going to come back to that and we're going to still go very deep in the library because I think that a library can really be an instrument, right? An instrument whereby we can use in fighting racism. And of course, I'm going to paraphrase what you said. You've uh, given a lot of points which are so important, adding to the comments from the people out there. You said that a library could really be a healing space and a process for those who are victims so they can go there. And a library 
English stands like empowerment because when you read books, books written by people like you, books that are meant to empower you and not only remind you of the things that you have gone through or, or the negative story, then you come out strong and powerful. And just like the Zonen uh, Blooming community say, it starts with a strong identity. So the library on itself can be like an identity for the people with people of African descent. This reminds me of a young lady some years back who told me and asked me this question publicly. But Vera, you, uh, we always hear negative stories about uh, Black people. And now, where do we get our history? Where do we get to learn? So I wish that she's here now. She's a doctor. And I wish she was here to see this happening. And that takes me to the question to Lamin. Lamin, who is an author and just wrote a book. Uh, Lamin, tell us a little more. Now we are you, you are an author. You're someone also with a black descent. And you're part of this task, this workforce. What is your role? And how do you think that the books that you put going, we're going to have to show the, the books you are writing as someone with black descent. How can it really step by step help in the identification of the black child? Uh, well, um, me growing up, I always felt like we as black people or uh, people of African um, descent, we are um we were oftentimes we are reduced to certain roles we are my, uh, our role in in the world in history is often marginal, marginalized to like certain roles like mm -hmm. dancing entertaining and um maybe sports but um there's so much more that we can add so much more value we can we can share with the world and um and books are a very important part to expand our mind and expand our conscious and expand our consciousness to what we can be and what we can achieve in the world. And um, a lot of a, a lot of us um, through this marginalization process, um, we reduce ourselves to those fears I just I just mentioned, and we don't even think that we can be active in the sciences. We can be active in writing. We can be access uh, we can be active in so much more like inventions so um that's why i feel is very important to um especially for our youth as uh, rose already uh, has already said especially for our youth um it's very important to see that um we have great scholars in in, in history we have great scientists also we have poets we have um uh, um, musicians, not only uh, not only in uh, rap music, but different um, styles of music. So musicians who have um, influenced classical musicians, so on, so on and so forth. And um, that's I think is very important. And to show um, that is more to the black narrative. There's more to the African narrative, you know, than this narrow than this narrow path. And that's very important. That's, that's what I was missing when I was younger. That's what I was missing when I was a youth to see, okay, there are different paths for there are different paths for me, you know, in this world than just this um this small field. So um we, that we are not limited. And that's um what I feel is important with this library, this with is important with books in general, but that's um our idea, I guess, that we have this place where we can all come together and learn about um, our history, learn about ourselves, and learn about our potentials, and um, come together and then put, uh, bring this potential out into the world. Thank you very much. This is just so brilliant. This is so brilliant. Learn about our history, learn about our potential, and bring it back into the world. And especially being those who write the story. I love the fact that you are an author. I love the fact that you are writing the story. And I'm loving, I'm hoping that in your writing the story, that you're bringing out just the best, like you said, the best of our poets, the best of our scientists, the best of our musicians, not just those singing the hip hop, but those composing the music because 
in the music is a culture in the music is a melody a melody that can heal a melody that can bring out the history and this takes me to you uh one rose who always talks about re-education now i'm so happy that the library as little as it may be we are starting small but i'm hoping we are going going to go big and that's why i choose to dedicate this day for your for the library as a way for us to also support the work because i believe strongly in the fact that we have to support ourselves and we have to support our work whether we like the work or not by all means but if it has something positive to empower a young person to bring about a change then i love it and i love to support it mom rose tell us more how does this library play or how does this library influence our rethinking pattern or different thinking pattern um yeah i um i'm a person who believes in books um i'm a person who always says books changed my life um definitely and um i think when we read books we get to experience other stories and other people when we read books not just about facts uh, but also just stories you know you start learning that there are other stories and it's so important for the development of of a child or even of just a normal human being to understand that there are different stories in life you know you need stories to identify with you need stories of people you don't even like you need villains you need heroes and with that you can kind of have a round form of development but if you never read you only have this narrow view of your own world with your own community and maybe a long time ago that would have worked because you know we used to come together we used to have the songs uh, we used to have our elders tell us our sto the stories so we used to have uh, um, another form of literature which Wadongo calls oricha but this oricha is now basically gone and our languages are all also basically gone some most of them or we know them but we don't really speak them so we have lost a lot of um a lot of touch with how we could learn things and how we could learn other stories and a way to identify and so i believe it's when we read books and when we hear other stories that we are able first of all to identify and um like i always say literature is anything anything that uses language as a medium to pass on information and when we have this um seeing stories of other people then we get words for ourselves and we definitely need words to express what we are saying and especially for our children they need words and we can we are not capable of giving our children all the words that they need so we definitely need a library we need books and why this library is so important in this role is that we know that one of the main thing that racism causes is lack of accessibility to resources so it's not like these books have not been there it's not like we don't know these books are there i mean we've had uh, black people people like shaban robert writing in the 1800s you know we we've had our books um it's just that they're not accessible where do you get them? Books are also expensive. And if you're going through racism, there's also the intersectionality. Sometimes if you're the person who's going through racism, you're also the person who's going through uh, difficult socioeconomical issues. Um, there's, there's a lot that comes with racism. It's not just the skin color. It affects all areas of our lives. And so with having a library, we are creating accessibility. We're not just bringing books, but making it possible to get these books that can always be given back and borrowed again. We are having books from people, people just giving us the books and, um, and we are making this space we're making it possible for, for people to just come and say, I want to read this book, I want to borrow this book, and just creating or making accessibility, making them accessible. We are going a very long way because when you go to the other libraries, you're not going to get these books. So um, you're not going to get the right identification that you need. There's another I love very much called Gara Kilomba who talks about becoming the subject, you know, and she says when you become the subject, you no longer view yourself as the product of white saverism, white, white um, 
white looks, white definition. And we black people have been defined so much by white people. Sometimes we have that definition of ourselves and we need another another person, other stories to also tell us about us so that we can we can have other stories. You know, if we only have these white stories, the stories of Shakespeare, the stories of, um, I don't know, Agatha Christie or all these other white authors that we read. Harry Potter is my big thing. I love Harry Potter. But if these are the only stories that we read, where will I know about my culture, about my people, what my people used to eat, drink, what they used to think about? Where will I get this encouragement to be outrageous? You know, because when you read, you see the outrage of another person, then you can also get outrageous. You can get angry. So we need them. And we are creating, we are making it possible, we are making it accessible, and with that, we are creating history, a small history, but all the same. Um, and I'm really proud to be part of this. Thank you. Thank you so very much. Um, I can only say, hey, congratulations. Congratulations for the work, for the job well done. It is a little step, but you do not want to imagine the impact it's going to have in the lives of the people in Cologne and, of course, in the lives of the Africans who are living in Germany, who know now that they can have access to books. They can come borrow those books, read those books, read about their history, and to learn from their history. So I'm very happy about it, too, and we can only encourage this work to continue. Now, I read, I followed your work on Facebook, and I was uh, told that I saw that you got that some money of about 5,000 euros. Now, tell us more again. Um, how do we help you? How can the community help you? Are you now, where is the program now? Where is the project? Where are you with your project? And how can the community help you? Any of you can answer. Where are you with the project? Maybe I start with Dr. Agnes. Where are you with the project? And how can the community come in to support this amazing work? Okay, first of all, um, at this point, I want to thank everyone again for your support that have already been done, not only in the form of giving us money, but also those who gave us their books and said, okay, I have read them, I want to share it with you to make it, uh, to be, to have other people being able to read those books, so thank you once again. So all of you that maybe might not have that much of money, or who don't want to give money, but want to give, donate books, or also in future, when it's easier also for us to meet again, maybe also help just with work, like to come and help us, maybe, um, just simple works in the library. We will set that up. Right now, because of COVID, <laughs> it's a bit difficult to actually meet in that form. So we're still thinking of how to also open the library, but we definitely are planning next, next month to have an uh, online event. And um, where right now we're just setting up all the furniture and um, uh, building up the books. And also, you know, it's a lot of work work behind it to categorize the books and um, all that work is being done now so once also once again I want to take the opportunity to thank Eoto so we're not the first library in Germany um, there's each one teach one that also helped us incredibly with their expertise and their their knowledge already and we're looking up to them and they're supporting. They also had the first reference um, library um, for people of African descent in Germany, actually. So thank you here again. I thank you also for recognizing the, the importance and the help of uh, each one, each one that goes again to recognize the fact that we are not walking alone and that, yes, Africans and people with African descent help and they want to see that the move forward. Uh, we only accept and we recognize the fact that racism has a way of manipulating so that we do not see that we are really helping one another. But I thank you and I'm giving a shout to our people from each one, each one, uh, those doing an amazing job as well. Keep up the good job that you're doing. Um, that my question to you now, Lamin. Yes, uh, you want to say something again? 
Yes, sorry, Dr. I was not done. Quite done. Sorry, sorry. One second. Oh, man. Um, oh, actually, I would I would ask all of you to spread the news, to spread the good news. That how that's how you can help us, and to also as parents, as you said it before, you don't have to really like the the the, the idea or fully what we're doing, or you know, or, or say okay, I'm fully behind it, or I'm not that political, or this and that. It's not about that. We're all different. We're all diverse, but we have the same source and the same course so if you can allow maybe your children to come or if you know someone is interested you might not be interested but you know someone who could be interested or you know someone that it could help or you just know someone that likes to um you know meeting people be around people um then just spread the news and let them maybe make their experience and you yourself also if you're um, maybe a bit um um yeah not sure yet also just experience meet us meet meet different people um now the communication as i said is more or less online but um just you know try to to be part of the movement and and um then wh whilst we're going we all figure out together where we can do a job together and yeah that's also ubuntu idea right Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. And um, Dr. Ham Buambo, this is your name. It's always difficult for me to pronounce. But anyhow, you know what I mean. Thank you for being here. And he says, great point. Thank you, bro. Thank you so much. And uh, uh, I'm going to, uh, Lamin, tell us more. The community is here and our great doctor is also here. What can we do and how do we help? What is missing again? Where are you and what is missing? Well, um, first of all, um, let me say thank you to everybody who donated, um, whether it is uh, money or whether it is books. We have received some great, great, some excellent books, some excellent books. So um, I was amazed. I was um, seeing the books we received and I, was, I, I said, OK, I want to read this. I want to read this. I want to read this. There's something I haven't read yet and I need to read it. So. Thank you to everybody who donated already. And um, of course, um, you can help us by sending more books and um, sending more book don sending more book donations. If you have books in your in your own personal library, if you have books in your own personal stock um, that you already read and you think um, other people should read, then please just send it to us, get in contact with us, send it to us. And um, yes, uh, like, Dr. Agnes already said, um, we um, having, you know, we're, we're kind of blocked through this whole um, COVID madness situation we're in right now, but um, we're doing our best and um, I think making great progress um, already. And um, we're getting, um, we, we're getting, um, we're getting there um, step by step you know, designing uh, the room and getting the room, uh, getting the room ready, getting the library ready. And um, yeah, hopefully soon we can all get together again. And um, so then we can use every helping hand there is, you know, with um, 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 carry, carrying books, um, ca category, I'm sorry, it's a difficult word. <laughs> Putting books into our catalog or just helping out at the library, you know, just being there, um, 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 helping out, um, opening up the library, you know, um, just being there present. And it's all, you know, it's, I, I didn't imagine it when we started out, but there's so much, there's so much work to do. There's so many um, so different fields where, where um, we need help and we need support. So everybody who's, who, who thinks this is a good idea and who wants to join us, just please, you know, contact us, write us, and um, there's, um, I think that there's a room, enough space, enough for everybody to contribute and to um, support us. Mm -hmm. Thank you so very much. Thank you. And uh, someone also from the Sampong Global TV just wrote, um, 
Rome was not built on a day, so of course, even the library would not be built on a day, but we know that it is a good start. And uh, yes, we have also amazing people say, what an amazing idea. Lee, I'm seeing you. She loves reading books, so no wonder she says, what an amazing idea. And I think that it is an amazing idea because for the sake of our children and for those that really do not know the other side of their history, this could be a space to get to know more of the history. And uh, you said they can contact you. So uh, Zonen Blumen says books can be sent per post to Zonen Blumen Community Development Group A found at the Victoria Strasse 6 uh, to 8 uh, 50668 in coin. So we appreciate all those that are going to send the books. We appreciate those that are still sending the money. And we are hoping that you have a space that is big enough to contain every other person where you can keep pushing the dream forward. Uh, Rose Wambri, tell us a little more. I It's from you that I knew about the project and I knew that you got some fund. And um, I thought, hey, since you love education and you love reading books, sure, this must be something now that will keep your passion, your passion high, and you keep talking about it. Mom, tell us, you have some minutes now to tell the people, are you where you want to be? Where do you see yourself in, with this project in uh, three years? And how can the community be part of this to support that vision? Mm. All right. Um, am I where I want to be uh, with this project? Definitely. Um, for me, it's it's a great um, it's a great opportunity to take part in this. Um, and um, I like letting go of results. You know, I I like the process the process of just doing it and letting myself be surprised with what can come out of this because um, I don't want to hang on it as if it's my thing, it's a community thing. And uh, and with that, uh, we can just let it grow and see. Um, I am already very impressed at how, how committed people are, uh, people like Lamin and Dr. Keith Amambo were went to collect books. Somebody just gave us a bookshelf, you know, from eBay, somebody we don't know. So it's really amazing what is actually happening. You know, people are just there and they're saying, oh, we want to help. So how I do see that, uh, we are going to go forward and I, I don't want to put on my own limiting beliefs into what can happen in three years. Honestly, I don't know. Um, but I just hope that it, we keep on going on and that it is just a progressive thing that goes on and keeps growing even long after we are no longer working on it, that other people come in and take over so that um, it can be sustainable. Sustainability is really what we really need. And um, if there are any librarians out there, really, if you're black, you're a librarian, uh, you want to support us, really just uh, get in touch because I'm a person who loves books, but I don't know how a library works. You know, I have a good idea of, oh yeah, I want a lot of books, but yes, now we have a lot of books, but what do you do with them? How do you organize them? Um, how many books did we get of this sort? Of course, we are gonna do all that, but it's a lot of work. And especially the children's books, we are going to have to read them before we can give them to our children, right? We need to read them fast and see, is this what we want our children to read? You know, so some of these things we are going to have to really scrutinize them because we are tired of reproducing material. We just don't want that anymore. And we don't want that to be represented in this library that we call our own from our own people. So um, it's a lot of work. Um, you can also support us with, as, as, the, as the others said, you know, spread the news, like us, follow us. That is the new form of power uh, so even that form of power is something we need the more people know about this the more we can grow the more people find out about it the more we can get support because uh, yes we got 5,000 euros that's a huge start but obviously it's not all we need to get going and yes we have books but there is no end to this thing we can always get more and more and more books we can get always get more and more money um, 
even for such things as transportation of the books, um, where to keep those books, the materials we need to um, to put them on a certain category, you know, all these things that are things that are going to need money. Uh, up to now, I really appreciate people like Linda Obermuller who've, um, who've really given us this room and uh, also everybody, you know, for this time, you know, we always meet on Zoom meetings late at night, some people have kids and it's a lot of work. Um, so we we will appreciate help, of course, um, yeah, in any form that you can, obviously. And we are also grateful for this far that you've helped us, yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Uh, we have questions from the viewer. We have one who said, but I think that the community is an unemployment community. Answer the question. Someone wanted to find out if these books could be donated in English, German, and uh, the the Zonem Blumen community answered books in all languages are welcome. And then we also have someone asking, is the library going to be at the Zonem Blumen CDG? I don't understand what CGD is. What does that mean? Maybe any of you can answer, please. Community Development Group. Ah, okay. So the, the library is going to be there in the Zonem Blumen Community Development Group. Yes. Thank you so very much. Now, my personal questions to you. Which books do you read now and why? Maureen, um, Rose? Ah, yeah. Uh, I have a face with Bell Hooks right now. Um, she writes a lot about teaching, uh, especially a book I love from her called Teaching to Transgress. I, um, I'm just loving this book. Um, I also have a face of reading um, How Europe Underdeveloped uh, Africa, simply because we have a sisters read group where we just gather with black sisters and read a book per month. And then we meet once a month and talk about this book. So um, these are the two books I'm reading right now. And um, I, I just love them. And so even with my re-education posts on Facebook, those are the posts that I always bring in that I learn from these books. Mm -hmm. Okay. And what? why are you inspired by those books? How does it help you? Um, Bell Hooks, for example, um, I love the way she writes. She, she's, I feel like she speaks to my heart. I okay. am a I'm a huge reader, so I, I kind of sink into the world of books, and um, that's somehow just the way I, um, that's how I operate. But for me, I feel like whenever she writes, she's, it's as if she's speaking to me. And the other book, uh, How Europe Underdeveloped Africa, is just for the fact. It's a book that is very difficult sometimes because it's a lot of facts and it's a lot of terrible facts about how many how many millions of black people died and so i always need time out from this book to go back to this book full of love from bell hooks and then go back to this one because i also need to re-educate myself and just know about my history where do my people come from and what happened and yeah if i know what happened then maybe i can know what to do today yeah We can't hear you. I muted myself. Thank you very much, Rose. Please just write the private chat, the book, so that we can also put it out here and a title so that our people can also read and maybe learn from what you are learning. Um, Lamin, I know you wrote a book. Is that a book you're reading now or another book that is interesting and why? Uh, no, I'm not reading my own book. Uh, actually um the book i have just finished and i would like to recommend to everybody listening or watching is um by professor ivan van sertima from guiana in uh, south america and it's called they came before columbus mm -hmm. and uh, like the title already suggested is about um the connection between um africans and uh, americans um before um 1492, before Columbus um, reached uh, the Americas. And uh, it's very interesting. And it goes um, deep into, you know, the travels of Africans to the Americas. Um, things we don't learn, things I, well, I, me personally, I never learned in school and I never heard about in school. And that is something 
like I said before, that helps to expand your mind and see, you know, um, see Africans and see our ancestors in a different light, you know, changing up the narrative and expanding um, your consciousness. So that's something I would uh, highly recommend to everybody. Excuse me, I just get angry when I hear about that name. How can they, how could one have come out with the idea that this Columbus, Christopher Columbus discovered, I mean, I just can't get it. So the people who lived there before this time, how do they call those people? I just hope that our children will get to get this history. Thank you for the library that you're opening. Um, Dr. Agnes, tell us more. But before I get to you, Dr., Tell me more, um, uh, Lamin, about your book. Tell us the title of your book. Maybe some of us are interested to read your book. And when did you write that? Why did you write the book? Uh, right. Um, well, I wrote the book um, in 2017 and 2018. Mm -hmm. It is called Du bist bereits. Um, we can um, I maybe put it into the... Uh, to the comments or the show. Just put the um, chat there or the comment. I'm going to put it up and mm -hmm. then so that we know more about it. It is good when we are already talking about books. So we know the authors that are around us, you know. We should right. know who you are, why you write the books. And um, I think right. I'd like to know more about it. Right. At the time, I was doing a lot of studies and um, on spiritual um, matters and, you know, just the nature of human beings, the nature of the universe, the nature of the world, and, um, you know, studying all different traditions, spiritual traditions. And um, I just, you know, I had so much input and I just needed uh, um, relief and I just needed an out, some, some output for it. So I just combined everything and put it into a small book. And um, yeah, I, I so where can we get this book? Where can we get your book? Do you have a space? Uh, do you have uh, where can we get these books exactly? Right now, you can um, you can order it on um, Amazon. You can order it um, to all the big German um, 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 online bookstores. Mm -hmm. So um, it's a it's available everywhere, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah. That's, that's it right now. I'm working on my second book right now. I, it's almost finished. Um, it's in the last touches. It would be a, more like a novel, mm -hmm. something like Afro-Futurism, Afro-Mysticism. But um, yeah, I, it'll, it'll be finished soon. So it, it will come out this year. Mm -hmm. It means <laughs> that this will be a good platform also for you to teach other people again how to bring their story and narrate their story. I'll give you an assignment again. Now I come to you, Dr. Agnes. Tell us, which of the books are you reading now and why? Well, good you asked me as the third person of these two um, <laughs> much readers. Um, so I openly say I'm one of those in the group that don't read too much. And I always have one or two or three books lying around. I always start. And um, because of my two little children that are one and three, I rather read kids' books. So one of my kids' favorite oh, books yeah. at the moment is Julia the Little Mermaid, which doesn't even have a lot of text for all of you that know this little black boy that is it's a right mermaid. The name of the corner there. <laughs> but, um, but honestly, I have um, Homecoming on my table. Uh, mm -hmm. That's a Ghanaian author, um, a female author. Um, then I have, um, I, I read Things Fall Apart again. I just finished it mm -hmm. last week because I said I still had to read it and it's important. It's a classic. And a great person just uh, told me I have to read Sigun. Yeah, I think. So I, um, I still, no, what's the name? Uh, yeah, I still have those th two books now, two remaining that I have to finish reading. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Amazing. I think books, I, I, I love also reading books. And for those who really don't like reading, you can always listen. That's a good thing with technology now is that, I mean, you must not read this paper books, but I love having the paper books so that it makes me feel like uh, I'm intelligent, right? But uh, you can as well just go <laughs> to YouTube and get that downloaded there, and someone just reads that for you and you listen to it and you're still smart. 
Mm. Don't, 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 don't get me wrong, Vera. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> I know. I don't want to get. I love that reading, aspect. but I have to. I, I read a lot of. I read a lot of scientific work. So sometimes mm. reading is then it's a time that you also use to do. You know, mm. I mean, but it's 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 still very important and it's good. <laughs> okay, thank you, Doctor. And now we are having just three more minutes. Please, each one of you, just give us a concluding statement and encouraging, empowering statement for the community, and of course, uh, an appeal to the people to make use of the library. I'm going to start with you, the re-education lady, Rose Wambri. We're not getting you, ma'am. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Um, yeah, I just want to say thank you very much for this space. And again, thank you so much. And the community out there, you uh, have shown yourself really in an amazing way. Um, I like saying that I always hear Black people don't support each other. Black people don't do this. But I have made really different experience. And I'm here. I think I can say Black people do support each other. And Black people do go a lot, really a long way to support each other. And I'm really impressed uh, at what we can achieve together. So let's see where this goes and let's just appreciate the process. And if you can help us in any way, like our process, um, come and physically help us, send us money, send us books, whichever way you can help us. This is our thing. It's for you too. So um, we will welcome any way you can help us. Thank you. Thank you very much, ma'am, and uh, we appreciate you too. We thank you for the work you're doing. And uh, Lamin, this is your space. Encourage us and tell us what's remaining. Empower the people now. Right. So I just, I would just like to say that to everybody, don't get discouraged um, by all the madness that's uh, going on around us in the world right now. Um, and um, I have to say that to myself also, you know, just just to keep focus on um, what you love, what you love to do. Um, and like for us, that's the library, you know, that's that. And, um, you know, by keeping focus on that, um, we already um, achieved achieved something. And um, I would just um, suggest that to everybody watching and um to everybody listening so don't let us get caught up in that and you know um remember who we are remember where we came from and remember that um you know our ancestors achieved great things and our ancestors um you know even with um a lot of opposition and a lot of problems you know, still carry through and still um, and still survive. And um, yeah, just um, remember our power and let's grow into our power. And um, we, we can achieve a lot in 2021, all of us. And um, so let's focus on that. And yeah, let's rise and go forward, go forward. Thank you so much. Let's rise and go forward at Tesla. They achieve a lot and we as well can achieve a lot. Thank you very much. And thank you very much. Also, Dr. Agnes, please give us uh, your last word for this evening and encourage us uh, what should we learn and what should we take home. And um, yeah, how do we help? Okay, first of all, I want to use the time again to thank you. Thank you, Vera. Thank you, all the people that help you also to set up this wonderful work um, behind the scenes, behind the scenery. Thank you to everyone that have helped us. Me personally, I've seen so much love and positive energy, and that's also part of the healing process. So thank you to the community. Thank you to Theodore Wanya's, um, Michael's family that have also supported us. Thanks to him because one thing I learned uh, through uh, like reading or knowing about his history is that no matter where we start from, no matter what we go through, no matter what kind of discrimination, if it's structural, if it's, you know, physical, if it's, you know, what we go through, he at the end 
overcame it and he's a survivor and all of us that's what i want everyone to know and to hear we are survivors we survive discrimination um di di racism or, or or even um uh, uh um intersectionality with women or whatever black women we overcome so many things we experience bad things every day and we're still out here doing a wonderful work doing wonderful things together and that's the best form of resilience the best form of you know um therapy i would say so um I just want to encourage everyone to stay in that positivity, to stay in that light and to focus on this good things that come out of it and um, to really acknowledge how strong we are because that's what we are. So lots of love to everyone. Lots of love. Thank you very much, ma'am. And uh, I also want to encourage everyone and thank everyone who has been with us. You are just so amazing. If you did not know by now, remember we are because you are. That is the Ombuto spirit, the spirit that belongs and believe in our community work and believe that we can only achieve if we do things together. And you know what? We have begun the process and we are in it together we are gonna make it to uh, get to a good end and uh, i love you all and thank you for being our guest this evening my name is vera sompon and i've been your host and uh, remember to tune in again on sunday for the business conversation and of course next week as well for other conversations all the programs we do it's because of you and because you are so important. Thank you so much and God bless you. Take good care of yourself. Be safe and bye-bye.